Welcome back to another video, it's Bath City v Salford City match preview for the first home game of the Skybet League 2 season. Can we keep up our 100% record in League 2? In the second game, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know your score predictions and your lineups and everything that you want to tell me in the comments down below. Like the video if you do go on to do so and subscribe if you're new. We're on to 700 subscribers, all the support is massively appreciated. We'll waste no further time then, uh, like I normally do, and just waffle on up for, up for ages. And we'll go straight into the key players for Salford. Now, um, you know, they didn't get off to a good start against Port Vale last week, and I will talk about that game a little bit later on. But the key players, I've gone with, I think it's Stephen Negru, uh, come on and loan from, I think it's Oxford. Um, United is a fantastic um, centre-back for, for League 2 level anyway. Um, really good aerial. Um, got, you know, because he's good aerial and he's got a good size on him and, and good frame, you'd probably won't think he want the quickest, but he has got a good bit of pace about him as well. Uh, maybe not long long sprint, but he's, he's very alert in um, close 1v1 situations. Um, very good in 1v1 battles. And uh, But, but the, where we can probably target him, I think, is probably his distribution. I don't think he's the best at distributing the ball in terms of his long passing. Um, so hopefully that can be a, a weakness that he has in his play against us on Saturday. Um, another key player is Cole Stockton, of course. I mean, you've seen all the key players um he obviously is a key player i mean he hasn't been quite at the level that he was at uh Morecambe last time he was in league two but barrow didn't really work out for him oxford at burton so he didn't really work out for him and he's come to solford now hoping that he can get fit and get firing and i feel like under carl robinson he can but what we can't allow is for him to have too much base uh, Neil Byrne's got to get touch tight to him. Uh, a couple of games so far, I've been quite impressed with Neil Byrne, but he, he doesn't get touch tight to his players. He tends to back away and then make a last-ditch block. You can't do that with Cole Stockton. You've seen, he'll shoot from anywhere, he'll score from anywhere, and um, you, you know it doesn't matter who you are. You can't give him that, that space and that time. Um, and I think him and Stott Salford are very similar to us this, um, this season under Mark Hughes. That 22-23 season, now we were reliant on Andy Cook and now we were one-dimensional, trying to get him to get to those 20 goals. I think that's how Stop uh, Salford are going to be with Cole Stockton this season, um, which you know it might get you in the playoffs, but it won't get you promoted um, because they become a one-man team. And then um, a bit of a wild card. I, I do quite sort of throwing. I, I do quite like to throw in a wild card. Now I don't even know if he's going to start, but just a player to watch maybe in the future. Now I don't know how old he is, but he's young, and I think it's his first senior season. And I, I won't be surprised if he came through Salford Youth Academy because that's something they seem to be wanting to promote more in these last couple of years and to progress as well. Um, he grew into the game against Port Vale. I watched it, and at the beginning I thought he didn't look quite confident or comfortable in midfield and I want to impress him but as the game went on he wanted to get on the ball more, wanted to turn on the ball more and uh, he's called Humbles, now I don't know his first name, I haven't bothered to look to be honest with you but um, very similar to Elliot Watt and I think that's the player that you, you look at and you think Salford are going to miss and then a young player at Humbles you know, it, um, you know it, it could be quite humbling um, watching him it, you know because you, you, you know people might have wrote him off but um, have a bit of humble pie watching humbles uh, because you know he isn't going to be humbling. Um, no, he ain't going to be fumbling any things. Uh, but hopefully he is um, in midfield for them. Um, so yeah, and he's got a brilliant cross on him as well. So don't allow him to get drift into those left pockets and rip a cross in because he's got a, a very good cross um, which um, sort of dips so we can't be allowing that. So I've already touched on it slightly, it's a bit of a new feature. Um, it's LTO, it's, um, which stands for uh, last time out. Um, yeah, that is, oh yeah, last time out, LTO, last time out. They played Port Vale. I mean, last time out it was Doncaster, but I'm not watching a cup game. I did watch them play Port Vale and they were poor with Salford. Um, they, they, they had a lack of guile, a lack of creativity, no punch up front to say they had uh, Cole Stockton and um, a new target man that got up front who looks like Vidane Oliver, um, you, you know, in terms of his style of play. Um, so, you know, he, he doesn't look too impressive either. They conceded from two corners 
unchallenged headers, uh, free runs in the box, uh, not reacting to the ball bouncing in the box for, for, for both separate goals there, really poor defending and that's hopefully something we can capitalise on but we don't tend to do well from corners in many years gone by now. Uh, they had loads of possession, I think they had 56% possession with around 20 shots but the 20 shots really were nothing to note really, I think they had two shots on target, it's a bit of um you know it, it's 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 smoking in in is, is that a saying smoking the grass because that, that's the same that's coming to me but uh, sm smoking the mirrors something like that um you, you know it, it basically covering the wall over your eye so something like that as well it, it, it's not actually what what it seems you know they didn't have too many chances at all um and part vale part the bus essentially and made it really hard for salford to create anything stocked and isolated and it were a really lackluster performance from salford um one that i probably didn't expect from them um and i'll get into that later head to head We've lost one in our last six against Salford. Now, when they came up, we had a terrible record. Graham Alexander, former Salford manager, played a part in that. I don't think we beat his Salford side. Um, and they were a bit of a bogey team for us. However, in the last six, we have only lost one. And we've won two and drawn one in our last three home games against them as well. I remember New Year's Day, was it? 3-2, we were 2-0 down. Abarisa came on and got the win after his injury. You know, we've had some good games against them. We obviously beat them last season in that really good unbeaten run to the finish of last season as well um yeah and that's that i think conor mccallany it's just come back to me ed i'm sure he has scored uh he's like in the top three or top five goals for, for players who have scored the most amount of goals against us he, he, he does tend to score against us a lot and i'm sure he's right up there conor mccallany um so i could just be you know pulling that one out from the, my back end but it also could be a proper start and, and i'm sure it is um the dugout we've got Carl Robinson sat in it this weekend um he, I think he's a great group for Salford I said it in my predictions and that's why I had them quite high up I'm a fan of his approach to to games and management he's been successful um K Dons Charlton didn't really work out he were Oxford and that was successful apart from the end when they were in a relegation battle but he got them towards the playoffs which is um you know that, that, for a club like Oxford that's that's brilliant of course um and then he's moved to Salford and I think it's a poor poor career move to be honest with you I, I just don't see how that is going to be beneficial to him he's obviously using it as a stepping stone or as a you know to get Salford to a championship because he sees himself as a championship manager and I think he could have got a load more league one clubs and I can't see Salford getting out of league two you know for, for money sort of drying up and they just don't they just don't look like a club but you go they're doing things right they did maybe five six seven years ago but right now it's stagnated a bit and I think the managers have had the turnover of players you should look at that and think that's not a club I want to go to very much like us in a sense but we, we also have that pull of the fan base the stadium and if things can go right it can go right whereas Salford it's the well the punching well above the weight as it is so I thought it was an odd move to be honest and I still think it's going to end to be that way for him um against Bradford City I think uh I mean it's on your screen so you can see it and I can't I think uh he's only beat us three times and I think we've drawn um I think we've beat him eight times and I think we've drawn twice now you you know what that is because you can see it, but I forgot to write it down for some stupid reason. Um, and then the other thing is that he has just come back from a four month suspension. Obviously, there's been a two month, um, a two month for it. In in that, I think he got sent off against Newport. Um, and I think it started from Newport. I think it was because of the shenanigans with the Wimbledon game where. And there were like 10 yellow cards, a couple of red cards, and I think he came out defending his team, saying that that's what he wants to, to see or something. And I think he might have got sent off as well. It was a crazy game, and uh, that's the Salford I'd have expected to come into this season. I haven't quite seen that yet from what I saw in the last game. What can we expect? Now, that is something I, I, want, I would have wanted to expect as a neutral, sort of looking at Salford and thinking what they can do this season to be successful. Um, but obviously, as Bath City, you don't want that sort of a team to come. Um, so, but like I said, I haven't seen that aggressive team. So I don't think we can expect that. I think from what I saw against Port Vale, the centre back seemed to pass the ball to the goalkeeper, a lot the midfielders back to the goalkeeper. He'd take a few touches and he'd punt it straight up to their centre back, and then Port Vale would win the ball from there. That that seemed to be the game plan: pass it to a keeper and hoof it, instead of get on the ball, turn and move into a midfield. Um, I'm all for direct play, but 
when forward passes are on and you're going back to your keeper too fit, it, it just seems a bit pointless and uh, they, 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 they stuck to that plan too often. When they went 2 0 down, actually, I, couldn't, I mean, I could have done this for last time out, but when they went 2 0 down immediately, they sort of went away from that and got the ball down a bit more and created a lot better chances through doing that. Um, so I don't know if that's something they'll look to do against us um, with the manager on the touchline as well, that could have an impact. Um, I'd, I'd expect us to press their centre backs when they've got the ball deep in their half because uh, that's what Port Vale did and they got a lot of joy from that. They didn't look comfortable playing out deep Salford. Um, but then when they had the, the centre backs had the ball high or deep in Port Vale's half, you know, in, in the opposition half, in, in our half, um, I, I wouldn't expect us to press us because to press them. Sorry, because the centre backs they, they often when they got the ball in that situation, they'd look for pinged, uh, sprayed diagonal balls, and sometimes they'd come off and you know it worked and it, it looked brilliant. But nine times out of ten, it didn't, and it'd go out for throw-ins and stuff. So they obviously haven't got the ability to do that till and and uh, Negru or Chester as well if he comes in. So I feel like that's something where we we, we have to stand off them if they're gonna do that. Um, what else is there to talk about? Uh, we will. Um, I've I've said that. Um, oh yeah, the the defend really narrow. The the back four very narrow. Basically right tucked in to their penalty box, trying to stop the crosses. But then the two wingers. Uh, whoever they, they choose, I mean they're all pretty rubbish to be honest with you, but whoever they choose, they'll tuck in and it's like a back six, but we've got to make sure that our wing backs are forcing their wingers back and wide, saying you've got your wing, their wingers out there and the four are still out here, so there's loads of pockets for players to be drifting in here, you know I'm thinking if, if Walker plays Sarsovic, Patterson, Point and Odvar, those players have got to be drifting in here on that side, Again, they've got to be drifting into this space because there'll be loads of space to create overloads, one-twos, and to work the ball into a box. And we don't need to force it. And because then, if if they're so deep and they've got so many players back, you can keep the momentum on there and then expect us to do, to do that at home. So I think that's where we could get a lot of joy. Um, so hopefully we do carry on to we do carry out to do that, and uh, hopefully they set up like that because I think our number tens with our system. That would be really troublesome for Salford. Uh, the ref watch then, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff, Eltwingham. I will go with, or oh, is it here, Hearingham, Eltwingham. We'll just go with that. Um, sorry, Jeff, if it's wrong. Um, he's a Championship standard referee. Uh, when I saw his face, I'm a believer. Um, right, it's her face, isn't it? But when I saw his face, I thought. I recognise you, and I thought, yeah, you, you referee in the championship. He had 18 championship games last season, and two League 2 games last season. One of them was against us, or falls against Swindon Town. We lost 2-0. Uh, don't really remember too many bad refereeing decisions, just Ash, Ash Taylor pulling out a disaster class. Uh, 18 games he has refereed against Bravty, which is one of his most, um, with eight wins, two draws, and eight defeats. No straight red cards yet, touch wood. Uh, so you can blame me if they are. Uh, my 11 for the game then, I've got, uh, well you can see it on the screen now so it's no surprises. Sam Walker keeps his place in goal. Brad Allardy keeps his place in right wing back. The back three of Baldwin, Byrne and Kelly. Tari Crichton left wing back as well. Maybe a controversial back line there in some areas. Small Patterson and Sarsovic keep their place in midfield from MK Dons and Cook. Partners Jake Young up front with a bench of Colin Doyle, Jack Shepard. Bobby Poynton, Clark O'Dra, Alex Gilead, Callum Kavanagh and Ollie Sanderson. Which, uh, yeah, there's controversy in there, I think. Burns starting is controversial, but I've been a fan of him so far this season. Jack Shepard, it's unfortunate for him to miss out, but I think we've got to keep a consistent back three, and that back three uh, was very solid in the main against MK Dons, in my opinion. Tari Kreit as well, at home, you've got to go for it. I uh, want impress with Richards. Odra, I don't want to be a left wing back, and I think... Tyke Wright didn't have a poor game against MK Dons, so hopefully he can play himself into form. That midfield three was superb against MK Dons, in my opinion, and the front two of Cook and Young. I think Cook, um, you know, nailed on, got a start. And Jake Young, hopefully he's got his head switched on and he's ready to put, play football matches for Bath City and contribute us in getting uh, wins. I'm going to go with a 1-0 win again. I, I went with a 1-0 against MK Dons. We got the win. So I'm going to go 1-0 again, and I'm going to go shock Tyke Wright to get the winning goal. So let me know your goal scores in the comments down below. Let me know your score predictions, your thoughts going into a game in the comments down below. Can we get back-to-back -back league wins for the first time since God knows when? Because I, I can't remember that ever happening, to be honest with you. Let's get a good start going. Let's get VP rocking. I want to hear you all. I want to hear you chanting. And I want to get, get three points on Saturday. Have a good one.
well, like I say have a good one. I didn't tell you to like, subscribe and comment, did I? Well, I told you to comment, that is important, but like and subscribe, please, because uh, it is appreciated. And if you, you know, if you like watching me, support me, please. Have a good one.